in. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, okay. welcome. Fantastic. Welcome to the RAC Center webinar series. My name is Frances Eza. I'm the head of marketing communications at RAC Center. Currently, we have about 65 participants um, on, the, on the call and more are joining. But we just want to let them know that, yes, we have started and um, you're in the right place if you signed up for our webinar. And we'll be talking about in interconnection and pairing and how that's going to drive the ecosystem growth in Nigeria and West Africa. So welcome everyone. Uh, we're just looking at another minute or two to have uh, some more participants join us. And then um, we'll kick off by an introduction to our moderator, um, Obina Adumike. So just one more minute for a couple more people to join in and we'll kick off. Thank you. Okay, everyone, good morning once again. So we are back and we're ready to kick off. We have just about a hundred people on the, on the webinar right now. And um, as mentioned before, I'll just reintroduce myself uh, to the new people who have joined in. My name is Frances Eza. I'm the head of marketing and communications at RAC Center. Um, this is our RAC Center webinar series, which we plan on um, um, having from now till the end of the year. So we'll keep you updated on um, topics and uh, times within the year when this um, um, webinars will continue to take place. Our plan as a brand, RAC Center, is to really just drive the conversation uh, for better interconnection across Africa and you know, our direct and regional environments. At this point in time, please allow me. At this point in time, please allow me to um, 
introduce um, Obina Adumike, who is the head of interconnection and pairing at AFKIX. He will serve as our moderator. Um, he'll share with us the agenda for the day. He'll introduce the wonderful lineup of speakers we have and basically ensure that we conclude this webinar um, in record time. And uh, most of the participants live here with um, as much information as um, 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 they can get on this subject. And we also look forward to having your questions in the question and answer session. So please allow me to introduce Obina Adumike. Um, Obina, over to you. Thank you, Francis. Welcome everyone to Rack Center Webinar Series 2023. I'm very delighted to be your moderator today. Um, as we progress, we'll be looking at um, a couple of things which have been put together to make sure that we all have a wonderful time learning and interacting with each other. Uh, the agenda would start from, of course, an opening remark, which I'll give basically discussing, looking at interconnection in Nigeria and in African continent, what has happened uh, over the period and what exists within the period and how we want to take that forward following this very webinar. <clears throat> After that, we would have um, a known name in the industry, Mohamed Rudman, the CEO of IXPN, who would give his um, presentation on internet exchange as an important tool for inter internet ecosystem growth um, in Nigeria. After which we would have um, a panel conversation with seasoned individual whom I will be introducing uh, in a short while. But the conversation will be centered around the topic, the role of internet exchange points and pairing to drive traffic efficient business and ecosystem growth in Nigeria. After that, we would have um, another short presentation where we'll be presenting um, another topic on interconnection and pairing from the value proposition of AFKIX. And then we would have a pool, a very short pool, just about three minutes, where we want to hear from you uh, about how relevant interconnection and interconnection of an IXP is to your business. Um, of course, IXP is one of the topics that uh, major topics that we'll be talking about in this very um, webinar series. Then we would have your questions and answers. So uh, we all advise to get into the Q and A session of this webinar. Start typing in your questions as soon as you begin to. Uh, get them as soon as the presentation starts and you get those questions, put them into the chat box, the, into the Q&A section. There are um, wonderful people behind the scene who would make sure that those questions are collected and presented so that answers will be provided by the relevant persons. And of course, we would have a closing remark from um, Rack Center's very own Kelechen Sofo, who is a senior sales manager at Rack Center. So, this is basically uh, the rundown. We hope that in the next one hour, 30 minutes, one hour, 36 minutes, we would have had a whole load of uh, message, information, and um, knowledge, you know, dished out to every single one of us. So let's get into it. So um, looking at Africa uh, as, as it were, we have um, Africa, just a second, for some reason, my, this is nice enough. Okay, so Africa today in terms of um, internet penetration is one continent that you can't do without, especially with us um, in Africa. Uh, Africa has over 500 million internet users, of course, which cuts across the major countries in Africa in terms of population, Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, and Morocco. Uh, both the internet penetration rate is still about 43% versus when you look at that vis-a-vis -vis the global, um, global average of 66. Compare that to the total population of 500, mil, uh, 500 uh, uh, million internet users and the 1 billion population. If you look at the 1 billion population, 33% internet penetration rate, which is what that is actually benchmarked on, and just about 100 million users, just about half of that, you see that there is still a wide range, uh, a wide gap that still needs to be um, covered. Uh, and of course, we know that a whole lot of work has gone into it, especially with the development of new IXPs, new internet service providers coming to play, cloud and content providers coming to the um, continent and so on and so forth. But in terms of internet exchange, we have 51 plus active internet exchange providers that is based on the African Internet Exchange Association, AFK, which is AFRIX, which um, Nigerian IXP is IXP, and of course is a member of and is also strongly contributing to. Uh, these cuts across 47 cities in Africa and 36 countries. The order of them, orders of them, of course, being the 
Johannesburg Internet Exchange, uh, what we call the South African Internet Exchange, of course, broken down across the various uh, cities in, um, in South Africa, which was founded in 1996. And of course, the newest being AFKIX that we just launched in 2023. In Africa, we, of course, most recognize people who have done a whole lot of work. Talking about NAP, NAP Africa that was founded in 2012, currently have more than 500 peers and at the peak uh, of three terabytes uh, traffic. Uh, this was sometime, I think, sometime December, January or something. We have someone from North Africa who could probably give further insight on that. But North Africa has done a tremendous work in ensuring that there is a growth of interconnection, which is reflective of what we see in the group of the growth of North Africa today. We also have our internet exchange point of um, Nigeria, founded in 2007, over 100 peers and 400 gig of um, peak traffic. Same with, uh, you also have Kenya, uh, Kenya Internet Exchange Point, very new, 2002, 2022, and 80 plus peers at about 80 uh, gig peak traffic. Now, when you look at these numbers, especially in terms of traffic growth, in terms of the Internet Exchange Point that has grown from almost nothing to about 51 of them in Africa, this was actually a work of a lot of time, including ISOC, which actually, Internet Society, which actually mandated or worked towards ensuring that at least 80% of internet traffic remains local in Africa. Just about 20 should go through the transit of course upstream, of upstream. For 10 years, this work was done, which resulted in this growth. What it means is that it's actually possible and it can be done, right? So bringing down that conversation to our own country in Nigeria, where we have about um, almost 200 million people, only 92, 92 million subscribers, that's about um, just a little bit less than 50% uh, of the total population of Nigeria. Currently, according to NCC, there is about 48% internet penetration rates. Um, and um, if you look at, put these numbers together, the landmass of Nigeria, look at the total population of Nigeria, look at the uh, mobile subscribers in Nigeria and that penetration rate, you realize that these numbers can still grow massively beyond this. And if you look at the period where this happened, just between the, uh, between 2015 up until now, when you now start seeing the growth of 4G, 3.5G, 4G network, when you start seeing massive growth in um, internet service providers, when IXPN now booms and start, you know, doing a lot of work in ensuring that interconnection and peering happens in Nigeria, ASNs was, you know, being rolled out to, uh, to, to subscribers and so on and so forth. If between then and now we could get to this point, what it means is that if at the end of this um, presentation, all of us take this knowledge, take this assignment out of this place and do some work, we can actually hit more than that. Remember the global average is about 66%. So if we could put just a little bit more effort, we could actually hit or even go close to the global average of about 66%. Of course, we've mentioned our um, internet, wonderful internet exchange point of, um, of Nigeria. Very recently, we've seen the entrance of you know, cloud content and CDNs in Nigeria. Of course, we all saw the news by AWS having come into Nigeria, Google, Microsoft, our very own cyber cloud, our very own Nobus, Meta, Netflix, Showmax, and all the uh, wonderful uh, people within that space that are coming into Nigeria. That's because there is a market in Nigeria. That is because Nigeria has both the population and we are growing in terms of infrastructure and we need to do more to make sure that across the globe, all the content cloud providers across the world whose services are consumed in Nigeria at high latency, high cost, and so on and so forth can begin to be dropped, assuming we are all, we all, you know, key into the conversation of interconnection and peering. And that's basically what that whole conversation is um, it's all about. Uh, of course, we, we see the conversations, the, the list of uh, submarine cables um, coming into Nigeria, of course, to Africa is expected to land this year, 2023. Equiano came last year and um, others. In terms of ASNs, autonomous system numbers, I, I put this here because I wanted us to understand the capacity of what we can do you know, as a country. The, 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 there are about 200 plus ISPs registered by the Nigerian Communication Commission and over 241 ASNs. When you break that down, you will see that there's actually a huge amount of ASNs that are currently not being accounted for within the interconnection and peering space. 
the financial sector, the education, the enterprises, you know, these are people that can actually be pulled together into that space to get, um, to get better uh, assets delivered to the, to the clients and end users, you know, lower the latency, lower down cost of um, uh, bandwidth and so on and so forth. So to look at all these things are, of course, great men and women who we've put together to help us, you know, drive down this. First, of course, is the CEO of um, IXPN, Mohamed Rudman, who has been in this industry over 20 years plus. You know, uh, he's currently the executive chairman, the executive president of uh, NERA, the Nigerian Internet Register Association, the chairman of Nigerian IPVC Council, committee member of Nigerian Cyber Security uh, Policy and Strategy in 2021, and uh, currently a member of the presidential committee on National Broadband Plan between 2022 all the way to 2025. We also have um, Yolande Kolek, who is currently the parent and interconnection specialist at Terraco Data Center Data Environment, working on the NAP Africa team. Of course, you have me mentioned NAP Africa. I'm very proud of NAP, NAP Africa. She does community, uh, bid on the parent DB product committee, uh, AFPIF, African Play Parent and Interconnection um, Program Committee, uh, Global Parent Forum Program Committee, South African. Uh, program uh, committee and has been doing a lot of work with uh, Euro IX in on the Pairing DB uh, toolbox project. Meanwhile, if you've never been to Euro IX to see what they're doing with the uh, Pairing uh, Pairing toolbox project, please go there and you, there's a whole lot to to learn and see. We also have um, our very own Darwin Costa from Day Kicks. Uh, he is in charge of. He's a partner manager for. Um, uh, I believe Africa and uh, Latin America. He uh, worked with Angola Cables before going to DKIX and currently an admin committee with uh, Pairing DB. He's also a program committee with the Angolan Pairing Forum and the um, Angola Network Operators um, Group. We also look forward to having him with, during the panel session. And uh, finally, but not the least, uh, our superpower, the CTO of Swift Talks Limited, who has been doing this for about 25 years. I, I call him my personal boss. Uh, he has a lot of certifications. I've done a whole lot of work around Microsoft, around ITL, around project management, um, microtech, and all the uh, heavy works you can think about in this industry, and who is a bachelor's degree in um, electrical and electronics engineering. And of course, Ben Rao, who works with Meta, I call him a Nigerian uh, by extension because he spends majority of his time um, in Nigeria. Ben Rai, ben Rai is one of those people that have committed a whole lot of time and effort in helping develop the Nigerian interconnect uh, space. Like I mentioned, he works with uh, Meta. He's also on the Pairing DB uh, admin um, program committee. And then he has also worked with um, uh, the Nigerian Pairing uh, it's an Interconnection Forum uh, Program Committee as well. And he does a whole lot of volunteering work um, on the Pairing DB uh, Outreach Committee. These are the seasoned people that we've put in together to help us drive down this particular topic. At this juncture, uh, without wasting your time, I would like to call um, Mr. Mohamed Rudman to take us on the very first presentation. Mr. Mohamed, you can actually share your screen and go from there. Okay, um, thank you so much, um, Obina. Do I have the, the, what is it called? Yeah, I can share, right? Yep. Yes, you can share. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, okay. Thank so, you. So, so, so mm -hmm. before Mohamed Rudman speaks, so we, we, we're going to have these for, um, uh, make it as as you know as short as possible i have to mention that because mohammed rudman is like a lecturer on his own <laughs> so as soon as he starts I, I hear you. <laughs> there's a whole lot that, that goes okay. on so mohammed rudman please <laughs> so, so it's it's, uh, it's 15 minutes right so please yes, not, yes, notify yes. me when i'm close to the time so that um you know i can i can stop so thank you thank you so um much. good morning everyone uh ladies and gentlemen i'll, I'll be talking about um, the internet ex internet exchange points as a tool, you know, for promoting of uh, the internet um, ecosystem. So, um, based on what um, was mentioned earlier, this is just a small statistics uh, for Africa, and I think um, we can we can pass that. But what I just want to mention here 
is that uh, predominantly in Africa, the internet access is via mobile devices. And um, that is just that. So what is this um, internet um, ecosystem? You know, we keep saying about um, internet ecosystem and we are discussing about internet exchange points and, um, and where does the internet exchange points fall into the ecosystem? So the internet ecosystem, um, I'm coming, okay, is, is a term used to describe the organizations and communities that guide the operations and development of technologies and infrastructure that comprises the global internet. These organizations share common values for open development for internet. So if you, if you look at it um, from the top here, you will realize that um, there are different um, constituencies in terms of the internet. One, there are policy development organizations, you know, um, organizations like ICANN, Internet Corporation for Assigned Name and Numbers. They are the ones in charge right now of the, of the internet. It was initially an organization under NTIA in America, and now it's a community-driven um, organization. And then you have for the telephony and also part of the internet, the International Telecommunications Union. Those are the organizations that are responsible for developing um, policies. Then you have the Internet Governance Arena. There are so many of them, uh, but part of it is the Internet Governance Forum. And then you have the end users, which are also part of the um, ecosystem of the internet, organizations, businesses, and individuals. And then um, you have the General Internet Society, uh, members like um, Internet Engineering Tax Force, um, Internet Architecture Board. These are organizations that actually design you know, um, some of the standards in terms of technology for the, for the internet. Then you have the technical layer, which has the, the physical infrastructure that the internet rides on. And then you have the numbering community. The numbering community are the ones um, under, um, the ones that provide IP resources, you know, and um, you have the naming community and the naming community are the ones that have the names, you know, for, for it means, all the .com, the .net, called global top internet do domain names. Um, you have uh, for country code top level domain names for Nigeria, you have .ng, .uk, they are all part of that uh, naming community. So if you look at this total um, summary, what I'll be discussing or when internet exchange point falls into the in infrastructure side, um, as well as enabling the numbering and the naming community. Um, there, this, the guy you see here below um, is called John Postel. Uh, sometimes he was uh, uh, mentioned as the god of the internet. Um, he, he has been a pioneer and um, he has been the one uh, managing the request for comments. Uh, when internet began, there is what is called um, request for, for comments, uh, RFCs and the, all the standards for the DNS, for the IPs and for the rest comes through that he has, and he has been the reviewer of those documents and he was unilaterally in charge of the IP resources, and in fact, of the DNS root, um, root servers. So he says that um, a name indicates what we seek, um, an address indicates where it is, a route indicates how we get there. So the internet exchange points, you know, that's the summary of the internet. The name is the name you type in your browser, the address is the IP address behind the browser, and the route is, is finding your way from your ISP to wherever, the, the address is, and that's the rule of the internet exchange points because it interconnects all the um, uh, network operators towards the exchange of, uh, of, of traffic. Um, sorry, okay, let me click here. So this is the technical infrastructure required to support local um, ecosystem, internet ecosystem. As you can see, this is a pyramid scheme. And as you go higher in the pyramid, there is an increase in value. Um, if you look at it, the, the fundamentals are the infrastructure. You need electricity, radio frequencies that NCC usually provides, fiber optic, telecommunication infrastructure, the mast and all the rest. Um, a bit higher layer now is interconnectivity where all the telcos are interconnected. For, for example, for voice traffic between MTN and Airtel, there is a point of physical connectivity between those, uh, those telecommunication companies. Then you have the ISPs interconnecting with content providers, higher educational institutions, banks, and that is the middle layer. So this middle layer is the cornerstone of the internet. Without this middle layer, there won't be internet. You know, so this is the bridge between 
the, the, the infrastructure and the top layer, the, the content, because whatever we do on the internet is about information, it's about content. And therefore the content is it's critical. And that's where a lot of revenue is generated. Um, those are, that's where you find all the applications. That's where you find the domain names, for example, all the URLs that are used uh, and uh, the .ng and the rest. And as that scales in a country, you will see that cloud service providers will emerge in those locations. And that is where the real value comes in. So if you look at historically in Nigeria, you can see that, of course, we started from the infrastructure, the radio, the frequency, then the ISPs evolved, then we have the IXPN, and then start interconnecting all these banks, uh, higher educational institutions, and the rest. Then you start seeing applications that are riding, um, like the banks now having an online presence where you can do your transactions and all the rest and all the rest. With the size of the banks and data increasing, you now need access to data centers. And that's when you start seeing huge data centers coming into Nigeria and investments. And that is when you have the real, real value. So if you look at it, maybe for example, you can, you can for those that are technical, you can compare it with um, the OSI uh, uh, model in terms of the network where you have the physical layer and the application layer. And everybody knows that the application layer is where the resources are, where the money is, you know, so, um, Internet exchange points are at the middle layer, as I said, they are the cornerstone. Without them, you know, um, there won't be the internet because when the internet began between Re uh, Stanford Research Institute and University of California in 1969, it was two, two educational institutions interconnected. Gradually other educational um, networks got interconnected to that. And that becomes what is called network access points, NAPs. Those network access points, whenever a university wants to connect, they will connect to any of those universities that are called network access points. And eventually, um, when National Science Foundation took over from the operations of the APNET, Advanced Research Project Agency Network, uh, which was fi financed by the uh, uh, Department of Defense at that time, you know, it, it literally becomes commercial. And when it becomes commercial now, uh, instead of the network access points in the universities, exchange points were created where um, there would be physical interconnectivity for the exchange of, um, of traffic. So based on the study, um, this is there was a study done by ISOC Internet Society in 2012, and later in 2020, you can see the URL there and you can even search uh, for the report um, online. Um, as you can see, they did a study to see the different levels of internet exchange points and the impact that the exchange points are making uh, to the internet ecosystem. And by the time they came uh, during the study in 2012, they realized um, they studied actually two different countries, Nigeria and Kenya. Um, Obin, I'm sorry, you made a mistake. It's not 2022 that Kenya IXP started. It was actually in 2002, it was much earlier than, um, than um, what is it called, IXPN. So um, the traffic at that time was, uh, we're at stage one of the exchange point where you have um, some local service providers and content providers that are connected and the traffic, the domesticated traffic in Nigeria was at around 30%. When they came in after seven years, they realized that we have moved from stage one to stage two where there is 70% of the traffic that is demonstrated. And we are hopeful that uh, soon we'll reach the 80% threshold because South Africa has reached that and where you have um, you know, lo local content service providers interconnected. You have regional ISPs. So for example, at um, IXPN, we have ISPs from Niger, ISPs from Cameroon connecting to IXPN. We even have um, international ISPs um, connecting and tier one ISPs connecting to the exchange point. We have, of course, more in international content coming into the country. So as we speak, we are in level two, where at least 70% of the traffic of some of the ma uh, major service providers connected to the exchange are uh, exchanging that uh, volume of traffic. When we started initially, the traffic at the exchange point is, le is less than 1% of the ISP. So for that, for, for example, at that time, if you have an ISP um, connected to the exchange point, is only 1% of their traffic coming to IXP, and 99% um, of that traffic was going internationally. As we speak now, um, substantial part of them, 70% of the traffic is offloaded in IXPN and only 30% of that goes internationally. So what is the impact of the domestication of data? Um, the study clearly shows here 
that um, in, in, um, in what is it called, in 2012, um, Nigeria was just exchanging 300 mega, megabits, but it's in 2020, it increased to around 125 gigabits per second, which was a saving of around 40 million US dollars annually. That is the savings at that time in 2020. As we speak now, based on the presentation of I did, we are around at 400 uh, gigabits per second. As we speak now, in two years, we have increased by over 200%. Um, okay, so that's where, where, where we are. And in terms of the, um, I wanted to share this to show that globally, you know, you have, everybody is connected to the, te uh, to the telephone, you know, using the telephone to connect to the internet. Those are mobile users and globally is around 84% of global subscribers. But when you look at the traffic that is being generated, you know, uh, from not from the mobile networks now, from the fixed broadband subscribers, um, the, the, the total is around fixed broadband subscribers only make up 16% of the total subscription. Because if I, I said initially mobile is 84, 16 is, is fixed, but that 16 generates 80% of the internet traffic. Why? Because those are ISPs that provide home services, fiber to home, fixed to home, and therefore they tend to generate a lot of data. Because when you looked at the mobile networks, you subscribe to a data bundle and it's a bit on the high side. But if you have it at home, it means you can use the Netflix on your TV, which is high resolution. You tend to consume more data. Your children can watch movies. You can watch uh, movies. You can do all sorts of things from home and from, from your computer. So in Nigeria, this is the, the, the current situation. And that's why I wanted to share this to show what IXPN is trying to do. Um, if you look at this, this is uh, including the month of February, 2023 for MTN. Um, when you see it, you realize that we have 156 million internet subscribers. And out of it, on only the fixed wired is 16,000. Then you have the ISPs that are wired and wireless, 204,000. If you look at it, it's 220,000 compared to 156 million, right? If you look at the graph there, the blue line is the GSM, and then you can see the fixed and the, and the rest. So it's really, really insignificant. And therefore, there was a study recently, which uh, I did not put here, that shows around 90% of Nigeria's traffic is actually on the mobile devices. And for us to really use the internet for educational purpose, for, for, for the good of the, of the community, for the, for the, and for the end users, not only for social media, we need it on desktops, we need it on tablets, we need it on um, televisions and all the rest. And therefore we need to increase the number of ISPs that are serving communities because they are the ones that can give um, high speed internet access so that our traffic um, can go as the global trend where 80% comes from the fixed instead of where we have now 90% from Algeria is from the mobile while 10% is coming from the um, telecom operators. So the impact of, of um, an exchange point, you see internet, the word internet comes from the word called inter-network, different networks coming together and those networks each one of them has what is called an autonomous system number that shows a boundary, that shows that this is a separate network. And these um, autonomous system numbers are, are gotten from regional internet registries. There are five in the world. In Africa, we have the AFRINIC. And if you look at the total autonomous numbers assigned by these regional internet registries, um, if you look at the graph here, you know, you can see that uh, there is a um, uh, ones that have some dashed lines and the ones that are solid. Um, autonomous system numbers comes in two. You have the 16-bit and you have the 32-bit, just like the way you have IP version 4 and IP version, version 6. So to the total African autonomous system numbers stands at just 2,500 um, oh, and uh, 570, 580. It's very, very small. And this shows the level of the internet um, ecosystem in Africa. But if you compare it with APNIC, Asia Pacific Network Information Center, or you compare it with ARIN, that is American Registry for Internet Numbers, and then you have the LACNIC, Latin America uh, Network Information Center, and then you have RIP, NCC for Europe. You can see Europe has around 44,000 autonomous system numbers. 
the ecosystem has really, really matured. There is a lot of interconnectivity and that's why you have very, very cheap internet access. If you now compare it with Ireland as well, they have huge numbers and that also shows why the prices of internet, um, uh, what is it called, is, is really reasonable. So this clearly indicates that, and that's why internet exchange points are the ones that enable um, uh, organizations to acquire this um, autonomous system numbers. System. So right. since inception of the IXPN, so let me say something about what we are doing at, um, at IXPN. Um, um, hello? Yeah, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, yes. Great, very good. Uh, just okay. about the three so, months. So, so keeping, keeping Nigerian internet um, traffic local, since we came in, as I said, from less than 1% to right now, we have domesticated around 70%, reduced cost for access to local content. Um, that has also been, I have mentioned that in the report of ISOC, $40 million annually just because of the domestication of the data we are doing and enhance local connectivity and improve internet experience for end users. Um, I will mention also that in my slides, you see that the latency has dropped for local contents and we are giving opportunity for ISPs to have an additional backup because some of the ISPs that are connected to us, should their transit service provider fail, uh, they have access to at least the local um, um, traffic. And that is some of the benefits that the exchange points provide that um, people do not relate to directly. So we, we act as a backup link for internet service providers. We promote and encourage creation of local content. We have had series of uh, engagement with the various stakeholders in different seminars, forum to ensure that you know we bring back our content and we domesticate our content. And technical, uh, building technical skills and capacity the more we look, domesticate our data, you have more people working now with data centers, they are building technical skills. But unfortunately, with all this, uh, I'm sad to say that with this jappering, people live in Nigeria in droves, um, a lot of issues we, we, we are seeing now are arising out of uh, that. For example, the recent issues that we have with the bank um, issues, bank online transactions, is just because their capacity of their devices have been exceeded and they don't have the right technical competent staff to handle those upgrades. And that's a major challenge. And this was um, uh, mentioned by the MD of, um, uh, what is it called, InterSwitch some time back. At IXP, and I mentioned it, around three people left within this year, uh, the, including the head of my, of my technical. So it's something that we as a community need to rally around to see how we can build um, technical um, uh, capacity. Um, the last one is act as an efficient centralized service launch point. Um, there are so many services, critical infrastructure that IXPN is hosting, and I'll mention that um, shortly. So this is, for example, the internet uh, depends on the domain name system, where even though behind each name you type on the your browser, there is an IP resource. So there is like you're on, your, on your phone, you have a phone book, you put the numbers, and then you put the names. The same thing with the internet. And what manages that phone book on the internet is called the domain name system. And there are major root servers that are managing the entire internet um, domain name system. They are called root servers. There are 13 of them. They are listed A through to M. Um, so at IXPN, we have partnered with a lot of these organizations to have presence of some of those root servers in Nigeria. If you look at the map there, we have uh, uh, around uh, six of them. We have E root server, F root server, D root server, and J root server. And apart from that, uh, we have also collaborated with NIRA to ensure that um, the .ng servers are local and they are hosted within Nigeria. We have also signed an MOU, for example, with VariSign to ensure that VariSign are the ones that owns the .com, the .net, .org, uh, to ensure that um, resolution of those names as you are searching is done um, locally. We, we have all those um, other things. So what do, what's the impact of this is that the end users will access websites, email servers faster and enhance the performance and accessibility. Um, local installation of root DNS will strengthen the root name servers network by providing it with more points of deflect malicious attacks on the foundation of the internet. In 2007, in fact, there, there were attacks on the root servers and is based on that any cast instance of those root servers we are now being distributed across the world to ensure that um, you know, um, no one can attack those servers at a go uh, due to distributed denial of service attack or anything to bring down the, the internet. So these are some of the critical resources IXPN is, is also hosting. This is also for the good of the ecosystem. 
And more of an IXPN right now, we have around 110 members. We are counting. Each one has an autonomous system number, of course. We are in seven uh, points of presence in Lagos, and we have four in other different cities as well. And as I said earlier, we have around 400 and, uh, uh, gigabits per second aggregate traffic. In fact, um, last week, it, it was hitting roughly around 480, but it has dropped to, to that. With the benefits of this exchange point and the impact it does in terms of pricing, uh, in terms of the reducing costs and um, um, what is it called, reducing latency and all that, uh, I explained decided to build um, in each of the six geopolitical zones. The idea is to ensure that there is an even growth in the internet ecosystem um, in Nigeria. Um, this is, uh, there was a, an ISP called ECNX in Kano. And in fact, they were hosting content some time back and including their website. We did a trace route before they got connected. This was in uh, 2019, I think. Um, we did a trace route and it was passing through the internet. By the time um, we have an exchange point in Kano and they were pairing, um, the traffic did not leave the shores of Nigeria. Uh, it goes directly from Lagos to ECNX in Kano. You can see the benefits. So anyone within Nigeria can have access to this content um, locally. But unfortunately, I was in Kano last week and I had a long discussions with them. Um, they couldn't continue the hosting in Kano, uh, including some other major websites. Why? Because of the incessant fiber link um, connections. In fact, last two, less than 10 days ago or two weeks ago, we had a downtime of five days between Abuja and Kano in our link. And to be honest with you, the, the service provider we are using is the best in Nigeria they still went down for five days. So the major pain points for IXP and, and for the ecosystem is one is the expensive transmission capacity. Between Lagos, Abuja, Link is more expensive than if you are getting internet access. So if you go and ask an, a, 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 a typical telco or an ISP in Kano, for example, you want to buy 100 MPBS, the cost they will give you is cheaper than if you ask for a tunnel, a pipe, between Lagos and Kano. So that's, that's an age, a major problem. That is not really helping domestication of our traffic. And then frequent link failure. As I mentioned, we could be having this challenge. And as we speak right now, I explain is really subsidizing this. What we are paying for the fiber links, we are not generating up to 50% of that in Kano. Why are we doing that? Because we want to encourage community service providers to spring up. When we went into Kano, this ISP that I mentioned here is the only ISP in Kano. Over the last three, four years, we have now seen five ISPs have evolved in Kano. And based on my last trip in Kano that I said last week, one of them is really willing to go to markets, to go to places to provide Wi-Fi hotspots and all the yeah, rest. Mr. So, yes. Mr. Mo Mr. Mohamed. Okay, yes. so we are already over time by about- uh, Okay, so, so, so I think, let, let me so end it round up. Yes. So quick. So that's it. So, so in some of the places we don't have local ISPs and then the technical expertise in those locations. With that, um, thank you so much, Obina, for giving me an extra extra time. I appreciate. It. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Mohamed Rudman. I told you people that he's um he's one of our best lecturers here I, in Nigeria. I, I, I hear you. <laughs> So before we continue, we'll be getting into the panel session shortly. I need to make a correction. During my uh, presentation, I, I said that Kenya Internet Exchange Point was founded in 2022, which would make it just about one year old last year. Uh, that information is not correct. Okay, it was supposed to be 2002, not 2022. Uh, uh, Kenya Internet Exchange Point has, has been there for, for a while, really. And thank you, Mr. Mohamed, for all correcting and all the other people who also pointed that out. Please, like I said, uh, feel free to use the Q&A uh, session, type in your questions there. There are people on standby to answer those questions and bring them to, to form. Uh, we'll get back to some of the questions that have been raised for Mr. Uh, Mr. Rudman. Uh, but before that, we'll get right now, get into the panel conversation. Mr. Rudman, if you could stop sharing, please. Thank you very much. Right, so on the panel 
session before we come back to take all the questions together. Uh, we have, of course, um, Ben Rao from Meta, as mentioned earlier. We have Austin Woodia, the city of Swift Talks. We have um, Darwin Dacosta, uh, partner manager for DKIX. We have Yolandi Collette. And again, we have um, Mohamed Goodman, um, who would be discussing around the topic and we'll take a couple of um, questions. So this was supposed to be for uh, 35 minutes, but we'll try to see if we can um, uh, manage the time that was um, already uh, over by five minutes. So gentlemen and uh, lady, let's get into it. Uh, so mic tests. Darwin, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Great, we can hear you. Ben, hi there. Hey, good morning. Great, good morning. Yolandi? Hi. <laughs> great, great. Mr. Austin? Hello, I'm here. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thank you. So I would um, start with Ben. And uh, the reason is because, of course, Ben comes from, from a giant, Meta, and he has seen this um, across various um, regions of the world. So my, my first question would be um, from your experience, you know, all, all across the world in terms of interconnection, um, pairing, and of course you manage the strategy for, for Meta. How do you think Nigerian businesses can leverage on IXPs and then pairing and interconnection yeah, generally I mean, to, for, I mean, for, for growth? Um, uh, looking at it generally speaking, because most of the time this topic is all about ISPs and CDNs and content providers. But again, I'm sure, as you have seen from Mohamed Rudman's um, presentation, other kinds of businesses can also benefit from ISPs and pairing. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm really going to echo some of the points Mohamed made. But for me, um, my dream business is leveraging ISPs and pairing falls into a few key categories. Um, you've got the technical um, aspects and the technical benefits, and, you know, Mohammed talked through those, but really it's about keeping traffic local, so that means keeping traffic in country, and, you know, as we think about how the Nigerian ecosystem develops, it's then going to be keeping traffic local within the country, so, you know, seeing those IXs develop past um, Lagos, um, you know, that could impact costs, um, you know, bringing that down, but also help improve reliability, um, you saw like there's various internet infrastructure deployed at the IXs. Um, and also, um, you know, therefore, you know, having that local can help reduce uh, RTT, you know, so round trip latency because the traffic will come in country. Um, another key piece is community. Um, so by having these IXs, you actually get like minded individuals um, talk together. And, you know, this happens in Nigeria, but you're right, I've seen this happen all, all over the world where I've, where I've been involved in connection. And something I'm particularly passionate about, um, actually how I got into industry was by connecting to uh, an internet exchange in London when I worked for an organization. And um, you know, from, from there met people and kind of helped my skill sets grow. And it's something we spend a, an amount of time doing. So it's good for people to build community, connect, um, network with each other. And, you know, also we help develop that by supporting IXs directly. And we also have uh, do it through ISOC, where we have an IXP development branch as well to try and help those communities grow and foster that kind of knowledge sharing and, and best standards. And then, you know, commercial, like clearly this isn't a commercial led piece, but by keeping traffic local, by keeping traffic kind of on an IX and reducing your uh, international capacity, plays into the reliability piece we talked about, but you know, also helps potentially to reduce your overall transit costs depending on what your kind of networks product is, mix is. So yeah, it, it falls into kind of three key kind of areas and categories for me. Great, 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 great stuff. Uh, before I come back to you in a, in a short while, there's a question on the panel in the chat box for you. I'll come back to you. I want to go to um, the lady in the house, Yolandi. Uh, yesterday, we, those of you that follow Yolandi would see him running around his um, a data center, you know, we call it um, patching day, right? So um, Yolandi has done some lot of work in, um, in NAP Africa, you know, the Terraco data environment. And he has, she has seen this across Africa as well, you know, being on the parent com program committee for, for the uh, AFP and a couple of other communities across Africa. Yolandi, do you think there is something we can do differently 
in Nigeria or in Africa that you have, we've not seen so far? You mean something different? Something different. I think there is a potential. I mean, Africa, if you look at the way things have been done in other countries, Africa is um, especially unique. You know, um, we have a few challenges, which comes down to the governments with their policies and procedures. We have the high cost of uh, connections. So if you want to uh, cross border, you know, you have your challenges. And for years, we only had one choice, um, you know, of a carrier to use. Um, I think we are definitely heading towards that where we can do something different. I mean, we have uh, Equiano and to Africa coming into the countries, you know, uh, as subsea cables, giving us a or another option to connect. Um, in terms of in Africa, you know, what I've seen over the past few years is just education around what is peering, how can it benefit my network, and how does it actually work. There's many um, networks within Africa that sits with ASNs. They already have an ASN, but they just don't have the knowledge or understanding of how do I use this? How can this benefit my company? Um, so I think that is something we can focus on definitely is just talking about how can, how can African networks appear in Africa and what does it actually mean? You know, what does it mean for their businesses or for their country? Yeah, thanks for that. It, it's, it's as if you just answered one of the questions that I actually put on the Q&A because someone already asked, okay, talking about interconnection and pairing, okay, what do we need? Where do we start? You know, so um, that's, that's wonderful. And um, I will come back to you in a while as well you know, for questions like that. And right now, from a testimonial perspective, we have Austin, who is the CTO of Swift Talks. He's peering at IXPN and he has done this for, for a while. So I'd like to know, Austin, how, from your perspective, all the benefits you've had, Mohamed Rudman mentioned, you've heard Ben talk about, are they real? Have you witnessed them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Good man is doing what you are not to be interested. So, um, from ISP point of view, we know that the 4Gs and 5G coming and the rest of it, the greater percentage of data has to be in the space. Okay? Now, as a testimonial, let me give you this. I, I recall when we started this business, then you have a content delivery network two blocks away from you. And to assess their network, you have to go to tele, you have to go to London Telehouse. Uh, 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 Mr. Oz, you might have to speak a bit louder. Oh, you're not hearing me well? Better, we can hear you now. That that okay. that that pitch, that pitch was 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 way was wonderful. Let's go with oh, it. Oh, all right. Uh, I was saying, you know, before before uh, uh, we joined the IXPN, I am saying, for instance, uh, you have a CDN three blocks away from you. And to get the content from that CDN, you have to go to London Telehouse and come back. You know what that means. And before we join, there are some customers that have the devices, servers that are latency dependent. By the time you set up your network, you are pairing with customer who is not paired at the ISPN, and you are doing 500, 300, 400 milliseconds, you can't work. So from experience, from the benefit part of it, the IXPN has played a big role in the ecosystem and making the business much, much easier. The cost saving, like he said, is possibly is looking at that $400 million, $300 million from the point of view of just what in time. But the local content that we share with banks, we share with other services, is not captured. But if you put that together, you find that the benefit is much more than he has even, uh, you know, uh, you know, position. But you know, we, I don't know today because he said about 170 pairing or so. That means there are still so many of the ASNs that are not still paired. And they are losing similar advantages because they don't know what they are losing. So IXPN, IXPs, 
and IXP meeting together, sharing content, making the services better, making uh, you know experience better, making customer happier, and everybody is good for it today. If you are paid at IXP, you'll find that your latency to Google 8.8.8 is one millisecond. So if you are not paired, you are still going to London to ping Google at 105 or 106 milliseconds. And so we know that with his presence, uh, other content are coming to this country and it is better for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Awesome. And um, just for a little bit, just to add to what he just mentioned, this, this, um, this could be tested. You know, you can reach out to Mohamed Rudman, reach out to us at Rack Center. We can actually show you live tests on how you can actually verify these latencies that we're talking about when you go through your transit providers, when you actually go through um, uh, other routes and when you actually pick these services locally, they can be tested and we can help you uh, do a test as me, you want to see that. You can also reach out to Mohamed Rudman in IXP and we can also help you do that. And I'm sure that um, if you have access to all the wonderful people that do these things across wherever you are located, that someone should be able to uh, help you uh, do that test. Talk to your landing in, in South Africa. I'm sure she'll be very happy to help you do a pink test <laughs> to any location of choice, all right? <laughs> Um, that brings me to <laughs> that brings me to Darwin. Uh, Darwin literally moves across the world, you know, setting up internet exchange points, right, and um, trying to get ISPs and anyone that has an ASM to connect to an internet exchange point. Uh, just to answer one of the questions that are already on the on the on the on the panel, Darwin, people are asking, what do they need to be able to connect to an internet exchange point? infrastructure wise or whatever it is that they need to get into an exit point uh no thanks thanks uh, obina and thanks uh, also to my fellow panelists i think uh, uh, even before ans answering this question which was posted on the q a i um, i was having some deja vus as well and uh, going back to where i was born and raised in angola which is very nearby to yolandi uh, and going back to miss mohammed was actually explaining and i took a lot of notes on that you know um uh, it, it's very interesting to see also a report from Internet Society on the 1820, uh, which was raised, I think, last year or two years ago. But when I went back to my country, when I was done with studies, you know, uh, I can share with everybody, which is on the call, that, you know, the cost per megabit on a wholesale level and uh, residential uh, FTTH, which was not available for everyone, was around $700 per meg, okay? And the, we didn't have any in-country uh, CDN by then. And I'm talking about uh, a decade ago um, yeah, from now. Uh, and then we needed to, you know, to have a strategy on how to localize that and, you know, well, uh, what we could localize it and what we could not, you know, we needed to expand the backbone uh, to the neighbor countries. Like South Africa was one of the, uh, one of the interesting sources we had in my previous life when I was working for Angola Cables back then. Um, but obviously, all, all of that, it's, you know, it's really trying to find what Mr. Postle said, right? A name indicates a route, and you need to see what the, what the content is, and you need to see how uh, quick uh, you can uh, reach the content and give it back to your, uh, to your community or to your customers at the end of the day, right? And from there on until now, uh, you know, we we are well. Angola is not that far away from from Nigeria. We are making the steps as, a, as it should be. You know, as a country, but looking into what Nigeria has done, or South Africa, or even Kenya, it's just a tremendous job, right? And all of the stakeholders, which are we, uh, you know, uh, on this call and others, uh, putting efforts together to uh, bringing not only the pricing down but also the latency down. It's really uh, at the end of the day for the benefit for the end user. Right, so that's one. And uh, answering directly to the question you raised me, uh, Obina, uh, getting connected to an IXP. Well, immediately, well, or oh, one of the mandatory requests we all have, I think it's the same for Yolanti, uh, you have to have an ISM, right? Uh, first of all, and since we are talking about Nigeria, African continent, go to Afrinic, ask for your ASN, you know, and you can either get connected through 
uh, uh, DKX, uh, uh, NAP Africa, IXPN, uh, either by Cooper or either by Fiber, right? It depends which, uh, if some some certain IXP is still uh, uh, accepting a connection of Cooper uh, uh, patching, but um, you know we normally do Fiber, but there are always ex exceptions, and we try to be flexible on that. Uh, but yeah, get your X uh, from Afrinic. Uh, just make sure you know what you want as a network and you know what you are looking for. And you know, uh, the peering toolbox from AeroIX, which again, Yolanda is also working on that, I think is a very powerful tool, especially if you are starting the ISP business or starting you know, uh, this internet business and you need to understand where to get the traffic from. Uh, and uh, how to lower your lattices and your costs at the end of the day. I just want to um, jump in on that, Darwin, is I think the next question is, how do I decide where to peer? I think especially, you know, in Nigeria, where you have a, um, you have options, right? There's, there's a few internet exchanges available. And as Darwin said, it really depends on, uh, number one, what you are trying to reach, um, and number two, the cost of actually connecting to the internet exchange. Um, so those are the two important things. I think before you do your ASN, you need to have this plan in place to, to know um, what are the costs, the, the total cost of actually peering. Don't just look at it you know, as, oh, I just need an ASN. Because once you have your ASN, you need to decide, where am I going to peer? How am I going to reach it? What are the peering ports? What are the hardware I need? So there's a whole bunch of things that you need to consider when you want to peer. But yeah, that's a good starting point is deciding what you want to do. Exactly. Great. Yeah, great. That, that, that's wonderful. And of course, um, that's an assumption that you already have basic uh, networking um, uh, and routing equipment, right? So, um, Mohamed Ruben, just before, sorry. Okay. I wanted to say something as well, just um, but it's okay. Okay, maybe you join it uh, to the question I'm okay. about to ask you. All right. Um, looking at uh, this this interconnection and peering, one of the people that we hardly see, uh, and I think you mentioned it in your presentation, uh, FSI space, financial institutions, bank, and so on and so forth, payment sector providers, educations, and all that stuff. If enterprise businesses that generate content and need the internet where is their place in interconnection and pairing? Is there a benefit to them? And what do they, where is their place in the interconnection and pairing? The, the banks and educational institutions? Yeah, all the non-traditional non network providers. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. I, I'll, I'll answer that. But before, before that, there are just five things that are required for someone to connect to an exchange point. One, you have to be a registered entity. You know, when you are a registered entity, that gives you um, the ability to connect to an exchange point. When you have that, then you have to acquire the autonomous system numbers and IP addresses from your original internet registry. If you happen to be in Africa, you have to go through um, AfriNIC. And if you have the autonomous system number, the third one is the physical connectivity. Um, you can't be in uh, Ibadan and wants to connect to an exchange point in Lagos, the cost of transmission capacity will be so high. So you have to be as close to the exchange point as possible. So if you want to peer, look for the closest exchange point to you. The physical distance um, matters. Um, then the, the, the fourth one is you need equipment. You need routers and switches. Basically for peering, you need to have a router that is BGP4 enabled, and therefore you use it to peer with that. Then the fifth one is joining the exchange point. So you have to pay in some membership fees, in some you need to pay port fees. And in some, in fact, is, is free. Yolande will give you a free port at, um, at NAP Africa. So you decide where you want to connect. So those are the, just um, the five things that I just listed that is required for someone to connect um, to an exchange point. In terms of, of your question, um, uh, you see the internet ecosystem keeps, keeps growing. Um, in those days, um, you have only traditional ISPs and those traditional ISPs, in fact, are the ones that are providing uh, are mostly the hosting companies that are hosting website. Later, you see um, the internet as it expands, data center evolving as a separate 
entity as a business. So um, the same thing with the banks. Uh, before now, banks are not into networks. You know, you have to go to a bank. But of this scale now, most of the banks are now having their data centers. And some of them, because of the emergence of tier three data centers and others, they are now moving their services to those um, data centers. And as they increase in their networks, in terms of what they use and the services, some of them are now seeing the advantage of peering at an um, exchange point. Um, for example, I will mention, I don't want to mention the particular bank, but there was a time they have three, three different networks that are providing them internet access. And those three networks went down at the same time. And at that time, they have very important meeting that they needed to connect to Zoom and do some other things. So at the end, someone from the bank reached out to me to say, how do we connect? And because we are very close to the bank, and by the time they peer with us, even if their transit providers went down, they still have a backup link. So to some of these banks where they come in is not because they want to really drop the cost of transit as per se, but some of them are going into that because of redundancy, redundancy to their service providers. Because if the, if the link to their internet link went down, they can still have access to their information that is hosted within some data centers. They can still reach out to local websites, send out emails, and all that. So these are some of the advantage. For educational institutions, the problem right now as we speak, you see a university of 30,000 students, yet they have only um, a gig of internet access. Some of them, in fact, less than that because of the high cost of internet access. So as I experience now, as we move into locations like Kano, we have encouraged Bayero University Kano, which has around 40 to 50,000 students, to acquire their own autonomous system numbers and to see how they can peer at the exchange point. What we notice now, the major bottleneck is that even within their, their, their university, they don't have an internal network and they don't have the technical skills to peer. So we have to go to Kano. We did went to Kano in 2021 to do a lot of hands-on training on BGP and how to peer and all that. So by the time you have those universities connected, it means that they have access to very cheap internet access which will give their universities uh, students access to information and therefore they can perform better uh, uh, in the university. So I, I don't know whether I've answered your, your question um, or not. Thank, Thank you. you. You've, 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 you've answered those questions. So at, at, at the end of the day, um, even though the goal is not the same between all the, um, uh, all the in interested parties in internet exchange point or in peer and connection, but there's actually a value for everyone. Uh, in terms of maybe probably trying to lower latency because you uh, naturally wouldn't be able to afford uh, huge um, costs. Uh, that's what we've been preaching to the educational uh, institutions. And I remember having that conversation alongside Mohamed Rudman to, in one of the, the banks, you know, which we're not going to mention the name. Uh, so one of the issues we, 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 we saw was, hey, look, we have 17 internet service providers. I say we're going to get rid of them. I said, no, you're not getting rid of them. We're not asking you to do that. But what we are basically saying is that apart from all the stuff you do with all the traffic you push out and so on and so forth there will always be a time when you might need to put something like going to the next level to pick up something that is that point where you would need an internet exchange point okay thank you um lady and gentlemen it's a, it's, it's always a pleasure with you guys i would come back to all of you maybe during the questions and answer session assuming there is any question that is directly related to uh, any of you so once again, it's 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 a pleasure. Obina, would you would you mind me just to jump into what Ms. Mohammed said on the on the perspective of IXPs? Because you know, we were talking about enterprises and you know banks and all of that, you know. Um, for some people might it, it might seem like it's easier to get those folks connected, but it's really all about you know. Uh, getting the community together and also to do whatever the NOGs are entitled to do so, which is training, right? Heavily training and get them up to speed because, you know, uh, talking to someone on the on our business, on the also business, you know, to get connected to an IAX might be an easy thing to do, right? But uh, involving the other sectors might take more time than usual, right? So I think, you know, we as all, you know, uh, uh, have an important paper in here and try to, to teach them and also to train them and bring them on board at the end of the day, right? So building communities at the end of the day. And for us at DKX, where we operate uh, more than 40 uh, exchange points globally, right? Each region is very different than other, but building communities might take, might take a while.
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Darwin. That's 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 that that makes sense um, actually. Um, so what we are going to do is that um, we have another presentation right now uh, that has to do with another internet exchange point, um, FKX, which I'll do myself. Then, like I said, I will come back to each of the um, uh, panelists to answer questions as these questions are um, uploaded in the queue. Probably it will help also give uh, detailed insights to one, some of the things we've, um, we've talked about. So uh, let's load up this presentation. Okay. Sure. Right. So, um, at Track Center, we were a career neutral uh, data center, and we have also been supporting the growth of the um, uh, internet community for for years since inception, and we've had um, great, tremendous support from all the. Uh, partners we could uh, work with and are available locally to, to, to work with. Um, one of those partners is DKIX, of course, whom uh, that one represents on this call. Uh, we uh, work together to actually uh, roll out African Internet Connects and Exchange. Um, what we are doing is basically to help drive and support the growth of internet in Africa. We want to all the things you've heard about today, you know, trying to help provide uh, functional traffic localization, try to make sure that we help drive latency drop, you know, reduce cost of uh, business, uh, help digital and uh, enterprise businesses achieve their digitization and acceleration journey. And most importantly, uh, like that we mentioned at the very last part of it, how do we um, connect the, support the community, existing community of, in our own situation now with, uh, with training the Nigerian Network Operators Group, or how, what can we do with them to provide training and so on and so forth, and all the other members of the community. One of that, of course, is the webinar that you are uh, connected to right now. Uh, one, these, uh, the group, the verticals we want AFCICS to actually focus on, we want to look not just within the uh, interconnect community where you have the ISPs and CDNs and content and uh, cloud providers, but being able to actually go all the way out. And as you've heard from the panelists, it's while this is usually a core conversation within the ISP space and the traditional interconnect member space, there is a lot of, there are a lot of uh, benefits that these other uh, people can also get when they appear locally, either at IXPN and in this situation with our, um, with AFKICS. What are we looking at? The three pillars of AFKIX, you know, for content um, localization and distribution is infrastructure and connectivity. As of today, AFKIX is uh, hosted at Rack Center, and Rack Center has the largest interconnect community. As of today, we there are over about 60 uh, interconnect community, ISPs, cloud and content providers, uh, ISPs specifically, actually, edge networks currently at Rack Center. And then you also have a portfolio of cloud providers and some also big and international uh, uh, cloud and content providers also who are already at Rack Center. So it actually forms a, a hub where you can actually aggregate and peer uh, locally. This is where AFKIX um, sits in. So we want to expand that infrastructure and make sure that the benefit of um, uh, localization of data, lo localization of traffic is actually enjoyed beyond, uh, beyond the shores of, you know, beyond the shores of where uh, where we sit right now. I think Mohamed Ruman was one that mentioned about how he's able to actually get most people outside of his immediate region to uh, also connect. Uh, we're talking about how do we improve national, regional, and international connectivity. Uh, that's, I will talk about in a while, how we're working with DKICS to ensure that this works, uh, how we are able to um, build in and hosting uh, content creation platforms within the facility. Uh, you all know that in Nigeria today, there are a lot of creators are rising up every single day. You know, how are we able to help those people make sure that their creations, the platforms they have uh, in the past few years, in the past two years here at Rack Center, we've seen a growth of about, I think, three local cloud providers here built running their businesses. You know, how do we help them to actually uh, get, uh, get on the conversation? Resiliency and redundancy uh, to existing uh, facilities. Of course, you've heard 
uh, a whole lot about what IXPN is doing and um, in the industry. And Rack Center is greatly supporting IXPN. Right now, we are the only data center that provides free cross connection to IXPN. We're the only data center that have dedicated account manager to, to IXPN. So that means now we are also, we've also built an internet exchange point that supports as a redundant path to uh, or to what to a route that you could use to uh, get to the local community as well with all the supports available to all the um, platforms we're also creating incentives for content uh, growth as well because we have um, we have the ability to actually discuss beyond the shores of nigeria we have that global uh, handshake with the likes of DKX, with the likes of all the other uh, top tier providers out there, we can actually help content, create visibility to um, for content in Nigeria, provide incentives for local content to actually grow. Uh, I've mentioned uh, we are providing free cross connection to IXP. That is also available on the Archix platform, which we'll talk about shortly. Most of the cloud providers at Rack Center right now, many of them, when they came here, they were all starting small. They, they don't even know what the next step is going to be for them. If this is, you know, why the business visibility makes sense, but the, in terms of infrastructure, they didn't know what was get the questions of what do I need to be in an IXP? So those, some of those incentives are the things that we provide to make sure that people don't fall out as they proceed, but they're able to create a baseline for them to be able to succeed uh, on their journey. And then of course, I already mentioned building demand for, for local users, the, IS, the local ISPs, the actual end users who consume this, because at the end of the day, it's all about the, the users, the me and you that actually consume the internet services. Yeah. So the platform was launched 23rd of March, uh, 23rd, 23rd of January. That's about, about two, two months or so ago. Uh, we have one gig port and 10 gig port available. That's our ASN and our IP addresses. As that today, we are already on a very progressive growth. We have um, a, a lot of uh, numbers already, which I will share with you um, in a while. Some of the key, key five key um, Five key points I want to mention to, to all of us would be, um, we want to, one of the things we're providing on the platform is actually how we're able to mitigate um, effects of uh, DDoS. DDoS is, um, uh, without going too technical, it's just, it's um, uh, uh, a security vulnerability that you get on networks. So what we have done is to build in um, something we call black holing is with, in partnership with our technical uh, provider so that service providers or ASNs that are on network who have who experience uh, attacks can actually drop those ASNs or those traffic on our platform. So we simply black hole it. You know, black holing basically means it goes to nowhere. So you can invest less, you know, uh, on, on network security. So you, you always have to invest on network security, but this helps you reduce whatever money you have to spend on network security because you already guaranteed that on our platform, we have this uh, security service available to you. And our policies, we have a very flexible um, parent policy. The reason is because it is basically not, um, it's basically not um, designed as a commercial exchange. So we're able to make sure we accommodate everybody irrespective of what your plans are. So if you have a restrictive uh, policy where you don't just want to pay with a route server and have your uh, traffic exposed to everyone, we could have that conversation and see how we can use uh, maybe a virtual PNI or create some um, private VLANs for you to be able to peer with one or two people. Or, but if you're also free to you want to peer with publicly on the route server with everyone, share traffic with everyone, which is what you usually get with the, the content CDNs and top providers, that is also available. And then the, the third one is the fact that we have created a close user group on the exchange where a group of people, a group of networks and ASN can actually come together. We provide a shared VLAN for them to be able to um, exchange traffic among themselves without necessarily doing that um, publicly. And fourthly, uh, I mentioned that we're working with um, DKX. So our plan is to connect to DKX um, either uh, through Lisbon, actually. And on the DKX network, there are more than 8,000 networks across over 80 cities uh, right now. So our plan is to make sure that we expose the DKX world, the global um, uh, IX space to the Nigerian uh, uh, consumers. Uh, it's
not necessarily compulsory, but when you consider your true uh, whatever transit provider you have, how what kind of decisions do you have to make? So that is um, a consideration and a available future for you. And of course, forms as a perfect option to whatever uh, uh, options you have, either from an exchange perspective, from a transit provider perspective, and so on and so forth. So you always have that uh, backup plan. And when you think about it, you know what, what's your plan for uh, for latency that that's guaranteed. What's your plan for uh, how do I lower my costs? Of course, we can verify that. Mohammed Rudman have shown that with an internet exchange point, you can actually bring down the cost of running your business. Like I said, we provide free cross connection to all the exchanges in our facility, and those are internet exchange, uh, internet exchange point of Nigeria and uh, Afkix. And uh, just like uh, our our big brother Nap Africa and a couple of other um, uh, IXPs, we also provide fit, uh, free port access on Afkix, and you have access to a portfolio of cloud content providers and some unique ASNs that are actually starting off here. I told you, I already mentioned that there are a couple of cloud providers that are beginning to roll out their services from Rack Center. So these guys, we're helping to grow, we're helping them expand. And then there are some other international ASNs that are naturally not domesticated here in Nigeria that we're able to uh, bring into the um, Nigerian space through our partnership with um, with DKX and all the others that I already mentioned. Because of time, I'll have to speak, skip the last two. As of today, we have um, uh, uh, Hurricane Electric, Net IT, uh, Smart City, uh, Luli Fiber, Cedar View, Bonani, and the entire Nigerian 200 plus ASNs are available on the internet exchange. And we have contract in progress with a couple of uh, other major IXPs, who, ISPs whom we expect to get on the platform in the next few weeks. And of course, um, we are working with the right people to make sure that we have a top tier structural MTP server in Nigeria so that on the platform so that members can have access to um, a verifiable, trusted, and secured uh, time uh, service. The same thing with uh, the DNS root name servers, uh, of course, in, in Nigeria. Right now, all the submarine cables in Nigeria are reachable through on the platform. You can actually uh, get on the platforms, uh, get on all the submarine cables through the platform. And um, also, we right center right now where we sit has a portfolio of top tier uh, content providers already sitting at Rack Center, whom uh, can be reached through the platform and hopefully would also get on the platform in the nearest future. Of course, some of them are mentioned, mentioned on, the, on the screen. I, I've talked about the, the some of the the fact that we're able to connect to DKX, which is, if you think about it, a transit service. And these are the options that are available to you as a member of AFKIX uh, when you come on board. You know, you're able to appear with top tier cloud service providers, enterprise businesses all across the country and internationally through that. And we're able to expose the Nigerian internet community to the global internet fabric through this. We are also trying to provide a platform for local and content providers to be able to gain uh, uh, join the international um, community. One of the things I observed, especially the likes of Yulandi, would have, uh, Yulandi Ben, all the guys that attend international uh, parent events, you will notice that from Nigeria, there is always the faces you see. You, we can predict that the next international parent forum, you can predict the faces you see, right? So how are we able to make sure that we expose more of our people to interconnection and peering, a work that is already ongoing through our partners. So we're also contributing to that work to expose them so that we have more people uh, enjoying this benefit, advocating the benefit, preaching this benefit, and um, so on and so forth. I already mentioned a couple of all, a couple of these also, you know, the DNS and top stratum uh, servers. So our connection to DKX gives gives us this and more. Uh, DKX it, it's across half five IX is across North Africa. Uh, with 123 ASNs, you know, and across uh, Middle East and Asia with over 20 IXs and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the cloud services that are available through that AWS, Azure, uh, Azure, Direct Azure, Google Cloud, and so on and so forth. But the interesting thing is that most of these guys are already local in Nigeria, you know, you can get AWS through IXPN and you can also do um, a, a PNI, and some of these guys are, are, are available locally. And we are hoping that most of these guys will also be available locally for you to assess. But when that fails or when that is not feasible, then you can also have a redundant path to be able to assess these guys through um, AFKIX. So these are the six reasons why um, uh, we think you should deal with AFKIX. You are guaranteed improved internet quality. 
you know, this is verifiable, this is testable. You can come around, we sit down, we do the pink tests, we do the test and you're able to verify how this actually benefits you. You are guaranteed to lower your internet costs. First of all, most of our services are at no cost. But when you think about that and think about the fact that you actually have to, you have very little, uh, you have very little um, cost to business because most of your, uh, your traffic are already local. Most of your traffic, uh, most of this cost to business are already provided for free. And you already have redundant parts to assessing most of these things. Um, I actually have someone who once asked me, is it possible for me rather than do a PNI to get an AFCIX or any internet exchange point and actually do uh, a, 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 a kind of a PNI without necessarily appearing publicly in internet exchange point? I said, yes, it's possible. When you think about that, it's a cost lowering option because some service providers have huge amount of cross connection costs across PNI. When you can actually take that and do you know, push them into an internet exchange point as a redundant part to breaking down your cost of running business. You can do that with IXPN and you can of course do that with um, uh, AFCIX. You have um, advanced network reliability, you know, like we've already mentioned because you have that it's, it's, it's a low, low um, on the OSI layer, you know, internet exchange point sits at the very, uh, at the very bottom. You could say that anyways, where you can actually have just a simple layer one or layer two uh, transaction between uh, whoever you want to interact with, you know. Uh, of course, you have, uh, you can peer seamlessly, like I mentioned, either through a virtual PNI or publicly on the route server. We are providing network protection. I can't overemphasize the importance of this. Everyone who have been on the internet community understands the importance of security. It doesn't matter what you have already invested. It makes sense to always have that layer of security at every point in time. And the sixth one, being the fact that you have access to a huge portfolio of ASNs across any cities available through AFKICS on the, the connection to the DKX uh, platform. So this is us. You can reach us, reach out to us at uh, info at afkicks.net. Of course, this our address is at Jagal Close or Regu Lagos. You can write to me directly. You can call me. Those are my uh, both, both of my numbers are available on the screen. You can just quickly take a screenshot where you are right now. You can just open snipping through and take a screenshot of that, reach out to us. Apart from the fact that we talk about AFCIX, like we have the capability to actually help you. It doesn't matter which way you want to peer. It doesn't matter who you want to do. As long as your goal is interconnection and peering, feel free to reach us. We are at liberty and we have the capability to actually support you to make the necessary decisions in terms of um, interconnection and peering. It doesn't matter where you want to peer with. It doesn't matter who you want to peer with. It doesn't matter how you want to peer. It doesn't matter the resources available to you. Reach out, we can help you. Um, get that conversation going unbiased. So thank you very much um, for listening to that. I'm happy to take questions. Like I said, get into the Q&A, dropping the questions. We see them coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, we would um, take some of those uh, questions. Uh, admin, secretary, I don't know. Do you... Where do we go? All right. Uh, we have barely six minutes to end, so we can. Yes. Francis, over to you. So there are some questions. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for your contributions. This has been interesting. There are some questions that have been um, um, put in the question and answer section, and we've selected some. We have about three or four questions that need answering. Some of the questions have actually been answered in the course of the discussions on the panel, uh, but some other questions stood out, and uh, we'll share that with you now, Obina, so that you'll be able to... Um, share that with the panelists and, and, and let's see if we can get some, some answers out. Okay. All right, All right. so why that is going on, um, Admin, can you also pull up the, the poll so that we can be, we can be responding to the poll while we the collate the questions and put them on yes, the screen? Yes, please. Yeah. All right. All right, so you have the poll on your screen now. How relevant is internet connection, uh, internet connection to an internet exchange uh, relevant to your business? You know, do you think this is relevant to your business? Do you think IXPs, do you think peering and data connection is in any way relevant to your, to your business? Kindly just pick any of the three and just two minutes to do this.
thing. I believe it's already three minutes. No, it's not three minutes yet. Please, um, just one more minute for them to be able to respond to the poll. We have quite a few people on this poll. Please, just another 30 seconds quickly to please respond to the poll. And then we'll be closing it out. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your response. Uh, we have a couple of questions here. Um, let's, let's get that going. Panelists, uh, get ready. Uh, the first one is to uh, Mohamed Rudman. The question is, IXPN is currently at stage two. I, this is following your, your presentation when you talked about the first, second and, uh, the fir the first and second stages. Uh, the question is, IXPN is currently at stage two and is looking forward to making stage three. What is the highest possible stage and what does that entail? Uh, okay, uh, thank you for that, Obina. Um, so the, the, the highest um, stage is uh, stage three and the difference between the stage two and stage three is more of uh, the domestication of data and ensuring that um, anything above 80% is, um, is stage three. So um, the ability of um, all the local hosting companies that are hosting outside to move their data into in-country uh, for banks and others to interconnect. Um, generally, it's just anything higher than 80% of the traffic, you are now at, um, at um, level three, just like the way NAP Africa is. You know, they have, I think, 80, over 80% 80 of that traffic and therefore um, that is level three. There is nothing higher than level three, yes. All right, thank you. Uh, the next question, if over, it's still still on you, <laughs> Mr. Mohammed. I think um, okay. you've made you, you've made as usual. You've made quite an impression. <laughs> so the um, next question is um, wonderful presentation. How are you financed at IXPN, and how many staff do you have? Uh, I don't know. Please share as much as you can. Yes. So 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 quick one. Um, NCC provided the Nigerian Communications Commission provided the SINT funding to Internet Service Providers Association of Nigeria at that time in 2006 to facilitate the establishment of internet exchange points as a community-driven um, exchange point. Um, that did not really go well. Eventually in 2007, uh, the NCC uh, inaugurated a board and they also provided some additional funding um, towards that. And over the years, you know, um, we got funding from, for example, from African Union, we got funding from NIDA to set up some of the exchanges. But as we speak right now, IXPN is a, an on self-sustaining mode where, um, for example, the revenues that we generate is what we are using for everything. So for example, in the last three years or four years, NCC has been providing uh, the link capacities to interconnect Abuja, Kano, Port Harcourt, but as we speak, that phase is, is completely off and um, IXPN is fully in charge based on the revenues that we generate in Lagos because we have a lot of customers in Lagos. We use it now to subsidize our services in those um, locations so that we can grow the, the different ecosystems across the country. In terms of staffing, we have around 12 um, people that are working with IXPN and um, we're trying to increase that as we see more, more competition coming into into, into Nigerian space. We are of course trying to see how we can also do, do our best because uh, behind AFIX now there is DKIX, which has years of experience eh, and uh, technology and resources which IXP and does not have. So of course we are trying to see how we can, we can survive the, the competition. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Yolandi, you are up next. Uh, so the question is on security. So the question is bordering on now that we are preaching that people should connect to internet exchange points and all the value chains and so on and so forth. What is the importance of security? Where is the place of security in all this? So remember when connecting to an internet exchange point, usually it's just a layer two server. So you can look at an internet exchange point as a cross connect. So literally a cable from yourself to a network to connect. So the security part of it would sit on your network. So you need to ensure that your firewalls are in place and that your routing is done correctly to ensure that you're not uh, you know, accepting any bad traffic or uh, causing any bad traffic. Um, so again, it comes down to uh, your um, training, training and talking to the community. What are they doing to ensure that they are uh, secure, that their traffic is secure? Um, and, you know, what can they do to prevent anything from happening to them? So, um, again, it really comes down to what hardware you are using mm -hmm. and how you are connecting to the Internet exchange points. Mm. Okay, Mr. Mohamed, please could you mute? Thank you. All right. So the next one, I guess this should be to me. Because well, no, sir. You said? So, no, it's not a problem. I wanted you to mute your mic earlier, but it's all right now. All right. So no the next question. That's, that's why I said we have to just buy a new stronger AC, two horsepower, and put it there. Mm. Wow. Um, admin, admin, could you do the notes for please? So uh, the next question is on data centers. Um, uh, the question actually says hosting in data centers in Nigeria to make local content uh, local is an issue because of downtime in connectivity. What can be done to address this? Considering that I sit in the data center space, I believe I should be able to answer this, but I would like um, uh, Ben Rao to, to take a, a run at this. I know that Meta hosts in Nigeria, they have facilities in Nigeria and they, that automatically means they have connectivity and connections and all all the interconnection related services uh, applicable to them. So have you witnessed what's your play, your take in terms of uh, the question which says data center collocation in Nigeria is still an issue because of downtime in connectivity? What can we do to address this? From your experience, what do you think about the question? Uh, that's a good question. Sorry, um, just to check, are you talking about the connectivity to data centers on this question or the data centers themselves? exact connectivity to data centers okay cool sorry it broke up a little bit for me um so yeah you know we talk about the internet ecosystem as we've stepped through kind of the content today and you know there's many parts of that ixp is one of them good quality reliable data centers another and kind of having an abundant supply of metro connectivity so a way of connecting between data centers or from your network to data centers is important as well um Competition helps drive this. Um, Mohammed touched on on reliability we see in the market. You know, we're in a position where you know we're working with operators in the market for us and designing our metro systems with the partner teams internally to try and bring the most reliable solutions possible. I think as you know, it's one of the areas we need to make sure that the kind of community and industry continues focused and driving and 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 you know essentially building new routes as there's demand for them. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, in all the markets you operate in, the, operating a physical network it is a challenge. And it's something you need to kind of, uh, you know, plan your resilience and your, your, your designs around, really. Thank you, Ben. Um, I wanted Ben to, to, to speak on that because he has first-hand experience hosting in a data center in Nigeria. And from my perspective as a data center operator, um, we, you need to understand that why the question is actually very valid, but um, over the years we've grown in terms of capacity, in terms of um, ecosystem. Uh, right now, there are a couple of top tier data centers in Nigeria. Rack Center is one of them, it's a tree uh, facility. I mentioned in my presentation that in Rack Center, we have one of the biggest um, community or intercon ecosystem interconnection in Rack Center with almost 60 uh, interconnections. Fiber cables, all the metro fiber cables in Nigeria are terminated at Rack Center, and all the CLSs are reachable from Rack Center. All the submarine cables by default are reachable from Rack Center. And we've, we've Rack Center have been in this business upwards of about um, you know, 10, 13 years now without a single downtime, 100% uptime. And we have enterprise businesses, banks, uh, you know, 
traders and other stuff that sit in Rack Center that have enjoyed the benefit of being in the data center, which is, of course, infra infra infrastructure sharing and so on and so forth. And I believe that is also applicable to a couple of other standard data centers all across Africa. You can go to South Africa, the same thing with Terraco and some of all the other data centers in Nigeria as well. So I, I think why that is a valid question, we should also realize that look, we've grown, you know, grown and we will continue to grow, we'll continue to add more uh, capacity to make sure that uh, things like uh, the fear of hosting in a data center due to uh, reachability, due to uh, downtime, issue of connectivity and all that is, is limited. And that's why we are preaching interconnection pairing, but a lot of work has been done. Feel free to reach out. We can have that conversation. I can actually show you uh, actual KMZs, you know, route maps, you know, redundant paths to ensure that that particular issue is, um, is addressed. And all the other questions, we have actually a huge number of questions at which we would would um, uh, answer via emails in our post and also in our post call um, conversations. Uh, there's actually one I would like to take before, before we, uh, we end it. This one says, uh, AFKIX, another form of internet exchange. I think I have to answer that, very important to me. Uh, yes, AFKIX is another uh, uh, internet exchange point. It's, a, it's an internet exchange point. Uh, all the values you get in an internet exchange point, as I mentioned, are available through AFKIX, and you are uh, very welcome to also use it as your peering platform or as your redundant uh, peering platform, as the case may be. So thank you very much, panelists. Uh, um, Obina, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to, there's also a question from Juan Emmanuel Agotola. The question is, what arrangement do the ISPs have? in terms of productivity over MNOs to reduce price of tunnel across Nigeria or Africa at large. Uh, you know, part of what Mohammed said earlier, this is one of the pain points, more like the MNOs are playing, they are playing, uh, uh, they are playing the role of a godfather that you must come to them. Uh, unfortunately, up to today, NCC legislation or the rules have not been able to address this in the sense that the pricing from the MNOs, the competition from the MNOs are not allowing the ISPs to grow at the rate they should grow because they are operating on the same vertical as the ISPs that are getting capacity from them. And then sometimes you find that they even say cheaper to an end user than they said to an ISP. And so, the, the prices are not are not borderless so it is one of the greatest problem one of the major problem why we are still having well we are still where we are because the isps are not able to grow at the speed we should grow because those who are backing you up are playing the same vertical vertical and horizontal with you uh, and because of this competition we are not able to have the full you know, footage as we ought to. The, the, the cost of the transport from Lagos to Kaduna to Meduguri to anywhere else is so expensive that the number of people you could have on the network, smaller businesses you could have on the network, rather than connect to you, just have to live with what's available by using dongles and the stuff like that. And we know there's not everything you can do on the dongle. It's not everything you can do on your phone. So it's a major pain point. And until this issue is addressed by NCC, who is the regulatory body for this service, it is still going to be the same way. I just wanted to point this out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Austin. Um, thank you very much. That was very insightful. And also, I, was, I Personally, I also believe that um, collaboration is another uh, option to also think about. You know, uh, considering the the, the time taking, the time the time taking to actually uh, address regulatory issues, um, uh, governance frameworks, and so on and so forth. Uh, collaboration also comes to play as well because if uh, multiple ISPs, if you heard Mohamed Ruma talk about the IAC, the internet service provider at Kano, how they've grown from one to about three or so, and all that stuff. So why? Because they were leveraging on um, on a shared in infrastructure, peering 
and pulling services through internet action on. So if all, if service providers who have like uh, M, like mindset can actually come together, collaborate, rather than one person taking up the entire cost of building and building out infrastructure. From experience, uh, all the developed verticals in Nigeria today, we are privately driven. If you keep waiting for the government, <laughs> a lot may never happen, you know. So being able to collaborate and get things going, it's it's one of the ways. But again, we can have this conversation as 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 long as uh, we are here because it's, it's an ending conversation. But we have to call it a day. We we are very grateful to all the people who stuck with us from ten o'clock up until now. All the panelists, every single one of you, wonderful as always. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite Kelechi and so forth to actually give the closing remark. All right. Um, thank you. I hope I hope I'm audible. I hope now you have me. You've already you've done quite a lot in um, appreciating the the host of um, presenters that we have here today. Mm -hmm. You know, but we just wanted to restate the fact that Rack Center, our core business is um, data center operations, basically and co providing colocation um, services, right? And um, just like Obina also hinted, right? To, this year marks ten years of doing that in um, providing that services in, in this region. You know, in the, in the last 10 years, I mean, we've seen organic growth, growth from, um, you know, our initial footprint to a 1.5 megawatt facility that we have today and ongoing construction, you know, to actually scale this up to um, a 12 megawatt. But alongside our core business, one of the key objective that we have as a business is Non knowledge sharing generally to deepen the conversations around um, facets like um, ecosystem growth. And that is what, um, that's the background on which this seminar or this webinar um, was actually initiated. So we want to thank um, the host of um, presenters that have taken out time from their very busy schedules, you know, from across different geographies um, from Yolandi to Darwin, Ben, I mean, we say thank you. Um, Austin, it's, it's always phenomenal having you, um, you know, speak to, speak to us about your personal testimonies in this region. And Mohammed, just like Obina said, I mean, whenever you're called, it's, it's always um, a very enlightening experience, you know, hearing from you. So we want to end this by um, appreciating you once again and saying this is one out of a series of webinars that we, we as a business are going to be rolling out um, this year, 2023. Um, so for this particular um, webinar, we, this particular webinar, I mean, we it was focused on interconnect and pairing. You know, and um, if, if I draw out, if I draw us back to one of the first couple of slides Mohammed showed, where he was talking about the infrastructure support um, in building local ecosystem. Um, our next webinar will be more, more or less looking at the cloud and how to support um, cloud adoption, you know, in this region. And thereafter, we will now also take it to um, cost effectiveness. In, in using um, and sharing telecommunication infrastructure. So one of four webinars that will happen this year, and um, we, we are also showing deep appreciation to the participants. I mean, at the core, at the peak of this year, we had close to 100 and over 150 participants, and this webinar couldn't have been successful without them. So we also extend our thanks and appreciation to to those participants as well. So in signing out, we wish everyone well and we look forward to coming back together when we call for the next round of seminars. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, bye. It was a pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.